Now, we had the Samsung Galaxy S22 series launching in pretty much sometime around the corner of February 10th or 9th. I forgot the date, don't ask me why. But the whole point that we're over here is for the leaks, right? But I do want to address something. Every time Samsung releases or Samsung announces some kind of like a new event to like release their S series or Fold series or their tabs or something like that, I can't really feel it. It's and it's mostly because of the fact that most of the stuff gets leaked. And now I made like a whole big rant about leaking and like companies leaking stuff and yada yada yada. But really, it. It's kind of annoying and also pleasant at the same time. It's annoying because you can't really like expect anything new or like expect to be wowed wow. by that event because there's gonna be like small minor details that the leaks actually forgot that will be actually included in the event and along with some cool official Samsung posters or like product showcasings and like all of that shebang. But really, these events have actually become more meaningless than they used to be, at least for Samsung for the most part. But that doesn't say they're actually bad phones or even bad products in their own categories. Now, before we actually like proceed further into the video, I'd like to talk about the naming and the regular Galaxy S22s first before we get into the Ultra stuff. Now, the naming is a kind of a confusing one over here, because like the vanilla S22, which is like the actual successor to the Galaxy S21, that would be the Galaxy S22. There's, there's no like change in that. The change over here is the confusion between a Pro variant and a Plus variant. Now, let's make this clear. Every year since 2020, Samsung has had three variants of their S series flagship devices. The Vanilla, the Plus, and then the Ultra. The S20, the S20 Plus, and the Ultra. The S21, the S21 Plus, and the Ultra. And the S21 and the S21 Plus in general, they didn't really have much big of a difference other than the fact that the S21 was made of glass on the back and also had a bigger battery, of course, and a bigger screen. Well, the S20, in its case, the S20 Plus had an extra camera and the same things like bigger battery and bigger screen. Although both of them did have glass at 1440p plus place than these guys. But well, the overall question over here is that Samsung is actually changing their name from Plus to Pro for these Plus variants, which is kind of confusing because they're not exactly Pro variants. The Pro variants are usually like called Ultra by the company, but then they're not really like Ultra either. So they're Pro, but then like uh, the leaks came in that they're actually changing it back to Plus. But as of, as of me making this video, previously it was called the Samsung S22 Pro. And now it's being called the Samsung S22 Plus. So it's the same thing. It's like same thing, different day, different name, all that sorts. So with the naming out of the way, what do we have for the new phones as of with the Samsung Galaxy S22 and the S22 Pro Plus, whatever. Now the Samsung Galaxy S22, well, overall for the whole series, they're actually trying to bring in 45 watts of fast charging, like overall and yes you won't get a brick in the box but what i'm actually seeing is that they're finally like bumping it up from the 25 watts and let me tell you samsung has been a slot when it comes to charging especially the fact that they not just included 15 watts but also like they only gave their max support of like 15 watts for most of their phones up until 2020 and after 2020 is well only when they like bumped up the speed to 25 watts and then 30 watts and then the like it keeps changing and stuff but now they're finally bumping up to 45 watts to keep like keep in touch with the trends and i still remember when 45 watts was such a big thing back in 2018 and 2017 and well, especially like huawei just bringing in this as a new feature itself now you have casual phones just sitting around 120 watts 100 watts or 65 watts that's the industry standard for today at least so 45 watts that's a good step from samsung hope they don't screw up with the heating issues though there have been plenty of heating issues with like the bricks and stuff like i mentioned in my previous video so hope samsung actually looks for that now the s22 phones they're gonna be the same they're the same thing except that they're just gonna have like a slight design change because like every year it's just like the designs that have been changing but even this year, I don't think the design is going to change much, except like there's going to be like slight modifications here and there. 
but there's not going to be a lot of difference same thing the s21 has a plastic back s21 plus pro has like a glass back and then the uh, both the s21 and the s21 pro plus plus pro bo both of them have 1080p screens full stop although like all of them will obviously have their snapdragon h1 or exynos 2200 chips depending upon region so not really much to talk about over here so let's skip to the good part the s22 ultra now clearly when we're starting off with addressing these phones the first thing to note is that the snapdragon h1 and of course the exynos 2200 now i am supremely disappointed with one of these chipsets and spoiler it's not the exynos so the snapdragon 8 gen 1 well it looks really good on paper don't get me wrong at all but the problem is that samsung's manufacturing them and with my initial reports on the xiaomi 12 pro and the xiaomi 12 i'm not really convinced that this is the best way to go like okay so uh, you've seen like samsung fabricated chips before especially the infamous exynos 990 and exynos 2100 and the other exynos chipsets and stuff but ever since uh, 2021 samsung's been taking the order of snapdragon's 800 series and some Samsung series chips as well and the reason for this is because of the fact that tsmc's most of tsmc's chip supply line is preoccupied with like apple stuff with their m series and the a series and the s series chipsets so what's the other half doing then well the other half is actually like occupied by mediatek who also makes chipsets and who's also technically actually coming way ahead of snapdragon at least in the upper mid-range market right now and i made like a whole video about that so linked up over here i guess so as i said i'm not really happy with the snapdragon agent one especially the way it handles heat because let's face it samsung's fabrication i'm not really like criticizing it much because let's be honest everybody knows samsung's fabrication process and stuff it's just the fact that it's inefficient at least for snapdragon chipsets and even for their own NAS chipsets but as a leading company in the semiconductor market snapdragon is kind of gonna lose a lot on this at least on the short term if they don't move quickly to tsmc well the good news is that tsmc's place is actually slowly clearing up which means snapdragon can port some places but the problem now is that it's kind of like a niche scenario where there's some tsmc variants of the snapdragon gen 1 going around and there's also the samsung ones and you don't know which one is which so when in cases like that you can't really trust the chipset in itself because most of the ones that are floating around are samsung made a gen ones so in that case i'm not really happy with the a gen 1 because of its throttling issues the heating and all the whole shebang the xiaomi 12 pro clearly showed me what it is and the gt2 pro as well well the gt2 pro actually did a better job than the xiaomi 12 pro although i'm still very much not taking into account of its really really bad cpu throttling as for the exynos 2200 well we have to wait until the exact like the launch dates and like had hand on, hands on with like the enthusiasts and like the tech reviews and stuff so we can't really like judge anything about the 2200 yet samsung is making a big fat deal about its ability to run ray tracing and our dna graphics on mobile where almost no games on the play store actually support this so we have to wait for practical usage on the 2200 until then the snapdragon 8 gen 1 or the 2200 for now based on previous specifications and like the usage and stuff i don't think neither are like a big thing so now that we've got the chips out of the way what else do we have now this beefy mammoth like creature well it's gonna have something like 8 to 16 gigabytes of ram like usual and then ufs 3.1 storage 512 gigabytes or even a terabyte might come like there was once a time where you could have a terabyte of storage on your phone and it would be a samsung phone until samsung removed micro sd support so you get the idea you might there's a lot of like top specs like top ultra specs for ultra phone but we've all seen this before 16 gigabytes of ram it's two years old and ufs 3.1 storage well who are you kidding there's it's everywhere hdr 10 plus screen yes that's there 120 hertz screen yes 1440p 
Yes, it's AMOLED and it has a Goragas Vectors protection. Yes, 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 and yes. So there's clearly not much changing. It's more of like an iPhone 12 to iPhone 13. Just a little bit more on the top. Not really much. What's an exciting feature over here? The S Pen. Now, the S Pen isn't something to be made of fun of. Like, and I think Samsung really didn't like take care of the S Pen properly because they kept playing with it with every other device they could fit it into. At least if they could upsell a person to buy it as a gimmick. The Samsung S21 has this ugly case. <laughs> and you put the S Pen inside it and then you charge it separately. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just gets me on my nerves. And those Galaxy Z Fold 3, well, that was another fiasco where it was like this book-shaped flip cover, which you had to flip once to use the cover screen, flip again to use the inside screen, and then if you wanted to use the Fold Edition, then there were two editions. There was like the S Pen Pro and the S Pen Fold Edition. The Fold Edition could stay inside that S Pen case, and then you could put it inside, but you had to charge it once in a while. The S Pen Pro, however, had to come with separate charging case as well, and it couldn't stay inside the thingy. And guess what? None of the S Pens worked on the cover screen of the Galaxy Z3. And it wasn't really quick notes anymore, quote from Michael Fisher, Mr. Mobile, but also the fact that Samsung took the S Pen pretty for granted. And that's also maybe the reason why they still sell the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra on their smartphone page, uh, except for those really, really bad posters of wanna buy a Galaxy Note 21 Ultra? Then buy the Galaxy Z Fold 3 instead. Just no. So I'm really happy to announce that Samsung has stopped doing that and Samsung may be reverting back to its own roots of bringing in a powerhouse phone like uh, Note 21 or Note 22 Ultra and that's going to be the S22 Ultra. Although I am pretty confused on the fact that is the S22 Ultra going to be called the Note 22 Ultra or is it going to be like the Note 22 Ultra in the form of an S22 Ultra or the S22 Ultra is going to say the S series phones but it's going to have no veins inside it or is it going to be like a mixture of the S series because the S series device is the phone or is it going to be like the starting for the S series Samsung is clearly changing something up with the names but from what we actually know the S22 Ultra at least from what we know it as for now it's getting boxy sides it's gonna have a place for putting the S Pen inside. Thank goodness, I'm really happy for that. Thank you, Samsung, for taking the S Pen for real and not for granted. And you don't have to charge it anything. There's no, you don't have like the S Pen Fold series and the separate S Pen and the S Pen Pro. No. This is just gonna be one S Pen that's gonna be sitting inside your phone and it's gonna be charging inside, you don't have to charge it. And for the days you actually have it, you'll appreciate it a lot. And I also hope that they actually increase the battery from the Note 20 Ultra, because for a Note phone, the Note 20 Ultra they really didn't last much. And I could actually like see it with many people's settings. So I hope Samsung does some kind of like an achievement over there. But from what we actually know for charging at least, 45 watts of fast charging as I told before, but also the fact that we'll be having wireless charging, same speeds, not really big of a change, and a 5,000 milliamp hour cell. So overall, it looks like a minor upgrade, right? Well, technically, yes. And even if we get to the cameras right now, well, it's just the same thing. A 10 megapixel 10x telephoto, a 10, 10 megapixel 3x telephoto, 12 megapixel ultra wide, a laser autofocus module, and a 108 megapixel main camera. And everybody was like talking about those 200 megapixel cameras that Samsung just recently announced. But again, quickly the rumor said Samsung wasn't going to use it in their latest their upcoming new phone. So same hardware, right? Well, if you've noticed something over the years, especially with like iPhones, Pixels, or even OnePlus phones for that case, they also tend to like stick with the same hardware for a long time. Especially when you look at it from OnePlus's side, they've stuck with the same 48 megapixel camera for every phone until the Hasselblad series thing came. So the 48 megapixel camera, they were able to like squeeze out just a bit more, a bit more with each year going forward and going forward. Same thing with the Pixels. And the same thing is still happening with iPhones. iPhones haven't like had an, a megapixel bump since 2015. 
And so I think for the second year of using the same lenses, I think Samsung can actually push out some great pictures. And even in Samsung's old phones, like the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE, the S21 FE, the S21 and the S21 Plus and the S20 and the S20 Plus, all these have 12 megapixel main cameras, which have produced some of the greatest pictures. But we're looking at an ultra phone, so we obviously need to have the maximum that we can actually bring in. So I'm really happy that Samsung isn't going and experimenting with their newest Note edition unlike something that they did back in August, which kind of pissed me off with a four megapixel under display selfie camera. At least they just stopped it with the selfie camera over there. So I'm happy that Samsung's doing the same thing. And speaking of the selfie camera, we're having a 40 megapixel selfie camera. Same thing, you're not getting like a bigger hole punch, you're not getting you're not getting laser autofocus, eye autofocus, anything like that. Just same selfie camera. And I think there will be a specialty camera mode this year something like what happened to director's view but i think samsung already like released their new like pro or like their prores equivalent this so i think samsung's gonna bring something like that so we have to hope for that and see and other than that ip68 water resistance is still there and what else you i really still hope samsung still has the earpiece on their top bezel and that's pretty much it there are also rumors that it will be a fully flat panel although i'm still having my doubts about that because almost like the whole screen just looks like a copy paste from the note 20 ultra just a little bit more bigger because the note 20 ultra was 6.8 inches this is looking at something like 6.89 or 6.9 inches so as for what we have from right now we already know what's actually coming and I'm pretty stoked to actually see the new phones this year and let's see when they come but until then I think we already know 99% of what's gonna happen in the event but until then these are the things that we're actually having and this is the first event in a long time that Samsung has not sold us new Galaxy Buds and I'm happy because that's just gonna waste a lot of time because for what you guys actually want to know this is it this is everything you need to know about the Samsung Galaxy S22 leaks. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video from this dead channel of yours. So until then, this is yours truly, Chris Leon.